Hi everyone, my name is Mark Moikins, and today I'm going to show you how to create a menu that slides out from the side. I'm starting with a single view application project, and here's my view controller. And what I want to do is I want to embed this in a navigation controller, because when I click on something in the menu that slides out, I want to navigate to another view. But I also want a way to come back to this, this main view too. So let's embed this in let's embed this in a navigation controller. Okay, good. So I'll be starting here. And we want a button that we can click on to show the menu. And for this, let's just give it a, an icon. Uh, let's try organize. Yeah, the folder. So when I click on this button, the menu will slide out. And then when I click it again, it will slide back out of sight. Okay, this is my menu example. And let's, let's uh, put something on the front here. So when the menu slides out, you can see that it's sliding out on top of this view. Okay, so when I click on this button, I want to show a view. So let's get a view on there. This will be my menu right here. Uh, probably only need it to be maybe this big. Okay, and then I'm going to put constraints on it here. And let's see, we'll give it the width. Let's round that out. We'll make it 140. Okay, we'll update the frame. There we go. All right, we'll change the color of this. Make it a lighter color, there we go. And then on here, uh, we're gonna have a button so we can navigate to a different place. You know, on your menu, you probably have uh, other things on there. Uh, we'll give it a different color, because that one kind of is hidden. Let's give it a brighter color, there we go. Uh, we'll change the font, make it a little bit bigger. Let's give the same font so it matches. Let's try to see what that looks like. Okay, eight from the top. And inside the menu, uh, let's just say eight, eight. Keep the height as 30. Whoops. There's a button here so that you can resize or update your frame so it fits. So there we go. And we'll just call this, uh, let's just call it like uh, navigate to view two. Okay, so we'll just add a view controller real quick. And this is what we're going to navigate to. And we'll just uh, we'll have this match as well. You know it'd be easier? What if we just do this? And what if we just delete that? Copy this. Ah, oh, look how much easier that is. <laughs> All right. And uh, yeah, let's give the same constraints. I'll make it 50 from the top, 8 from the sides. It already has the height constraint on it, so we'll leave that as it is. Okay, we'll call this view 2. Excellent. Now when we click on this button, we're going to navigate here. All right, so let's test that out and see how it looks. Now we haven't, we haven't done anything to the menu to make it slide out or in, but I just want to make sure the project is working as we have it right now. Okay, good, you click on that, come back. All right, perfect. And nothing happens when we click on this button. Okay, good, so let's do that. Now, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna start with this view. And remember, we have, uh, we have four constraints on this view. The main constraint I'm concerned with that we're gonna be changing in our code is the leading space constraint, this one right here. So right now, this is set to zero because it's hugging the uh, that left margin. But what we're going to do is basically we're going to do this. The width, the width of this is 140, right? Okay. So when the project starts, it's going to start out, we're going to have it start out with at negative 140. And then when you click on this button, the view is going to go back to, uh, where's that view? This view right here is going to go 
back to zero. So it's going to go like that. So really, all we're going to do is manipulate that one constraint. Okay, so okay, it's set to negative 140 right now. All right, that's fine. Let's go into the code and uh, create an outlet for that constraint. Mm, that's not right. All right. Let's go manual. And let's go to our view controller. Okay. Let me just double check. That kind of concerned me. Let me double check to make sure that that view controller is hooked up. No, it isn't. Look at that. Uh, whoops. That's the wrong one. View controller. Okay. I don't know how that got disconnected there. Let's get rid of some of these things that we don't need. All right, so we need a constraint for that leading constraint. And I believe it's this one right here, yeah. So let's create an outlet for that. And we'll call this, oh, I don't know, uh, leading constraint. All right. And when the view loads, we wanna make sure that leading constraint is at a negative 140. Um, which it already is, so that should be fine. We shouldn't have to set it here. But when we click on this menu button, let's create an action outlet for that. And we'll say uh, menu, oh, yeah, let's call it like open menu. Now in here, that's where we want to set it to zero. Constraint dot constant equals zero. Okay. So let's see if that works. There we go. So it's already hidden. And when I click it, it pops out. Okay, good. Now I want to click it again and hide it, right? So I'll need some kind of variable to keep track of whether it's uh, showing or not showing. So let's create one up here. We'll call it menu showing. And let's default it to false, because when the app starts, the menu will not be showing. So when we come here, oh, is there a problem here? No. So when we come here, we'll check it to see, is the menu is showing, then we want to hide it. And to hide it, we want to give it a negative, what do we say? Uh, what's the width of this here? It's 140. So we want to make it negative 140. Maybe just use this line right here. All right, there we go. So make the constant negative 140. Else. Okay, so if the menu is showing, we're going to, uh, that's wrong. We want to make it negative, negative 140. So we want to hide it. And then making that leading constraint back to zero, we'll show it. Okay, good. And so we want to toggle that value of the menu showing variable. So let's do that. Equals not menu showing. So that's just basically going to give it the opposite value. Okay, so let's try that. Okay, click it once, menu shows, click again, doesn't show. All right, so there you go, there's your side menu working. Uh, you can take it a step further. If you wanna dress it up a little bit, like let's, you know, when you click the button, it just kind of pops out there, right? Uh, let's give it some animation. So it looks like it's actually sliding out from the left. And when the menu is showing, it's this is when we show the menu. So let's do it here. Now, in order to animate this, you can't animate the constant property. It's not animatable. You know, like when you when you command click on a property, usually it says in the, the comments, it says animatable. This is not animatable. But what we can do is there's a property that is animatable, and that is the layout if needed. It's not, it's not a property, it's an actual uh, function. Uh, it's called uh, what yeah, I'll 
I'll just show you right here. View dot layout if needed. Lays out the subviews immediately. So that's what we're actually going to be animating is when the layout actually happens. Okay, so we'll start with uh, UI view. Talk animate. Okay, let's do something really simple here. Um, maybe 0 0.3 seconds. And our animation will just be this line right here. Referencing the self because it's inside of a, a code block there. All right, let's try that. There we go. So that looks a little bit better, right? Uh, the way it slides out like that. Now, there's something else we can do too. It's obvious to us because we put it this way that this view is above this one. Uh, but if you want to give it some height, if you want to give the illusion of height, uh, you can add a drop shadow here, depending on what your design needs are. And uh, so we'll just add that real quick, just so we can see what that looks like. Now I'll need to refer reference this view control or this uh, UI view. So what I'll do is I'll create a reference to it here, and we'll just call this the menu view. Okay. And to give something a drop shadow, you really only need one property. Uh, by default, UI views actually have a drop shadow, like a three-point drop shadow already, already on the view. But the opacity is zero. So if I um, turn that opacity up to one, which will show it, then we should be able to see the drop shadow. And it's on the layer. Shadow opacity. And we'll just make it one. Alright, there you go. So you see you can see the the like kind of like a dark shadow, uh very subtle on that menu. If you want to make it more obvious, what you can do is uh increase the uh, shadow radius. So let's do that. Shadow radius. And by default, the shadow radius is a three. So let's make it uh, five. Let's make it six. We'll double it. And then we'll see what that looks like. All right, there you go. So you can see the shadow a little bit uh, more clearly. All right, thank you for watching, and I hope you enjoyed this video. Please leave a comment if you have any suggestions, or you might know some other ways to be able to implement this menu. And if you like the video, give it a thumbs up. Thanks, bye. Hey guys, it's me again. There's one more thing that I noticed when I ended this video, and I want to show you guys how to fix this, in case you noticed it too. Now notice on the edge of this view, we see the drop shadow. That was the drop shadow we just created, right? For, the, uh, for our menu. So actually, this is the edge of our menu that we're seeing, the drop shadow for the edge of our menu. Let's, let's get rid of that. And the way to get rid of that is when the menu is hidden is when we have the, the constant at negative 140, right? So what we're going to do is let's just make that a little bit further in. Like Let's make it like 150. And remember, this, this menu, uh, we started it out, the constraint, we started out with a negative 140. So let's change that too. Let's make that negative 150. Okay, now when we hide it, it's going to go uh, even further to the left. So it should take care of that drop shadow. Let's take a look. There we go. That looks better. So now you can't even see the shadow at all. And when I click on this, the menu works just like the way we programmed it to.